My name is H.J. Goodman, and I'm an author, columnist, and journalist. Please go ahead and share my latest Daily Caller article. It is below. Free Julian Assange. I'm very, very happy and honored that WikiLeaks actually retweeted the article, so I'm really happy about that, and I've had the great pleasure of having WikiLeaks retweet and share my work be, uh, before in the past, uh, during the election and after the election. I've even had uh, Julian Assange uh, retweet uh, a segment, and so um, I'm just very happy about that. Please go ahead and share that article below. This is really interesting. Before I get to the House Intelligence Report, Clapper hit for dossier leak dodge in House GOP Russia report. So here's a quick recap of everything that took place in terms of lies. President Obama's intelligence chiefs lied pertaining to all of this. The Steele dossier, Trump-Russia fabrication, the hoax, the myth that Russia actually worked with Trump to defeat poor Hillary, which is absolutely ridiculous. $46,000 in Facebook ads didn't swing the election. They probably didn't influence even one vote. But, and, and most of those ads were seen after the election, but let's just talk about each intelligence chief. James Comey lied under oath, committed perjury regarding exonerating Clinton before her interview. He didn't even wait for six, what, 16 in, uh, witnesses to interview 16 witnesses pertaining to the, or 16 suspects um, pertaining to the Clinton email investigation. So he just exonerated her without even those witnesses and be, before Peter Strzok even spoke or had brunch with Madam Cyberhack Hillary Clinton. Peter Strzok also talked about an insurance policy with Andrew McCabe, said we couldn't take the risk of a Trump presidency, deleted five references to gross negligence in the initial conclusion of the FBI that would have tied Clinton directly with U.S. Code 793F of the Espionage Act that talks about gross negligence. Obviously, she intended, obviously she intended to utilize the private server, and she intended to transfer top-secret intelligence onto that private server. How she transferred special access program intelligence and top secret intelligence is exactly the, the foundation of all the crime she's committing. Why she did that, we can go on forever. I explain it, but her top secret emails and but her deleted, deleted emails below on Amazon, my books, my two books, explaining exactly why and possibly how she did that. Nobody knows for sure. James, uh, James Comey lied under oath. So... Even before we get to Clapper, he lied under oath. He also used a Steele dossier that was compiled by an MI6 agent as opposition research. And no, the Republicans did not start it. The Free Beacon had nothing to do with Christopher Steele or commissioning the dossier. The Free Beacon had uh, Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS on retainer. So when they say, well, the Republicans did it too, it's all relative. It's all morally relative. No. Once Clinton got in the mix, and Fusion GPS then contacted MI6 agent Christopher Steele, then he never even met his Russian sources, but he utilized all these this ridiculous nonsense and gossip that has led to, oh, I don't know, BuzzFeed being sued uh, for defamation. And that has also led to uh, BuzzFeed suing the DNC to protect itself from its defamation lawsuits. Anyway, this is all, the backdrop is all, the NSA is moderately confident. $10 billion is the NSA budget. That's what the estimate is. And with $10 billion, you get, oh, we're moderately confident that Russia inf interfered or hacked the DNC. Of course, the DNC never gave its computer service to the FBI uh, or anyone in the U.S. government. They gave the, the, their service to CrowdStrike. I know, by the way, CrowdStrike was also commissioned by Hillary Clinton. CrowdStrike and Fusion GPS were commissioned by Hillary Clinton through her law firm, and she never told the Federal Election Commission. That's $9 million that she never told the Federal Election Commission about. Gee, I think it's a little bit more important than the Stormy Daniels payment, where a woman who had sex with Trump was given $130,000. This was in 2006 she had sex. 
And now they're trying to say, oh, the money was part of some kind of campaign, Trump's campaign, which is a big stretch. But we do know, we do know that the Steele dossier was actually purchased during the election by Hillary Clinton through her law firm, CrowdStrike, through her law firm. This directly related to the election, obviously. So James Comey lied under oath. He also lied about a whole bunch of things. If anybody would call him on his lies, he said that uh, he, when he was under oath, he said that, well, they, did, they couldn't interview Anthony Weiner, and the reason was because he had ongoing legal trouble. It's ridiculous. It's so stupid. What a stupid answer. So the FBI now doesn't want to hurt people, doesn't want to bankrupt people. Mueller doesn't want to just go ahead and you know, make people sing and twist the vice. Oh, they're twisting the vice. Everybody's Rick Gates and uh, Manafort and Papadopoulos and Flynn. Flynn's an honorable man. He needs to be pardoned or, or cleared of, any, of everything. He didn't do anything wrong, General Flynn. But all these people are supposed to sing and flip and sing and flip. It's supposed to be like this uh, acrobatic Celine Dion, like Celine Dion and Mary Lou Retton and everybody, you know, oh, my God, they're singing and flipping. Nobody's doing anything because nothing happened. Mueller is just annoying people and trying to destroy their lives simply because of Comey's memos. And we can get to Comey also lying about <laughs> his. So before I even get to Clapper, I got to get through all the lies from Comey and Brennan. That should take at least two hours, but I'll try to get it done within a couple of minutes. Um, then Comey said, well, you know what? I have these memos and, um, oh, my God, I'm going to memorialize my gossip. So he goes ahead, writes memos, four of which are classified. Bob Goodlatte and his team, Congressman Bob Goodlatte, have to read the memos in a skiff, sensitive compartmented information facility, the same uh, secure area that Hillary Clinton transferred top secret or special access program or classified intelligence from onto her BlackBerry that was oh, unencrypted for the first five to six months. What do you think took place? The whole planet hacked into her server. That's obvious. But so I kind of gave you a rundown of, of James Comey's lies. There's a whole lot more that he lied about. But in terms of lying under oath, he lied under oath about exonerating Clinton before her interview. Now we get to John Brennan, who is not only a liar, you want to talk about unhinged on Twitter. This guy's hilarious. Um, but he lied, and Dianne Feinstein was livid. He lied about the Senate spying on Obama's, oh no, the CIA spying on Obama's Senate when Obama was, was in office. The CIA spied on the Senate, and they were um, investigating Bush-era torture. And he, he said, no, I, we didn't spy. Then they found out, yes, in fact, the CIA actually spied on our government illegally. Well, obviously, it's all illegal because, you know, the agency is supposed to work for the United States of America, not for itself. Anyway... So he lied under oath, John Brennan. So, so he committed perjury. Then you have James Comey who committed perjury. Then you have James Clapper. This is like the hat trick of perjury. Then you have James Clapper who lied under oath about the NSA spying on Americans. Then we found out from Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and Edward Snowden that, of course, they lied. he was lying. The NSA spies on Americans all the time, illegally. Then he lied just now. So you have three of Obama's head spies, top spies. Clapper hit for dossier leak, Dodge, in GOP Russia report. Former intelligence chief James Clapper is facing scrutiny for allegedly providing inconsistent testimony to the House Intelligence Committee regarding his discussions with the media about the anti-Trump dossier. Now that I gave a, a kind of I guess as quick of a recap, I mean, it's nine minutes of just explaining how all three, Brennan, Clapper, and Comey lied. I could have done, obviously, two to three hours. You, you know, they all they do is lie. And you're talking about, like, and they're after Trump. Oh, my God. He talked about crowd size and voter fraud. Oh, oh, the post-truth moment. Meanwhile, like, these are people in Obama's administration lying about grandiose issues, you know. The NSA spying on Americans, the CIA spying on the U.S. government. I mean, these are big issues. Obama lied, of course, about not knowing 
uh, that Hillary Clinton, his own Secretary of State, had a private server. How do you not know that? How do you not know that? And especially Cheryl Mills met with NSA officials to speak about her BlackBerry when they said, nah, no, you can't use the BlackBerry. So the whole, a lot of people knew about the server uh, setup. Um, what's not, well, Brian Pagliano's four uh, years of missing emails, his emails are missing. What we don't know is how the intelligence, the top secret intelligence was transferred onto her server outside the US government and we also don't know things like, for example, the emails that she deleted. This is, I'm not even accusing Clinton of this, but was she selling classified intelligence for donations to the Clinton Foundation or just for money that she pocketed? That's, tre that's actually treason. We wouldn't know, though, because it was outside the U.S. government, and theoretically the NSA, the CIA, the FBI have no knowledge of what she was doing. They just trusted her. Nobody asked the most obvious question, what was she doing half the time? She deleted 30 plus thousand of 60 plus thousand emails. What was she doing half the time? If, if Trump deleted one email, it would be hashtag one email and they would be like nuts. Like all they would talk about is the one email. The one email was treasonous. The one email was, she deleted 33,000 and she somehow managed to transfer top secret intelligence onto that server. We don't even know how. It could have been through screenshots. It could have been through a, a, a thumb drive. It could have been a whole bunch of different ways. Anyway, now we get to James Clapper and a really quick recap. What took place was the insurance policy that Peter Strzok talked about. So it's not, an, it's not a conspiracy theory. In his text message, and I believe I have it right here. It's below in the description section. In his text message, Peter Strzok goes ahead and he says, I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Andrew McCabe's office, that there's no way he gets elected. Trump, what path for consideration? This is, this is the, all Congress has to do to just blow this thing wide open and to just fight. Trump could fire Mueller tomorrow. He can go ahead and fire Mueller tomorrow and simply put Peter Strzok's text message. And, and this is a profanity alert. This is a profanity alert for my 12-minute crowd. He could tell the Democrats to go fuck themselves and just say, Mueller, you're fired. Fuck off. Or Rosenstein, you're fired. And then, you know, Mueller's fired. Or however he wants to do it, in whatever way he needs to do it, bureaucratically, in a bureaucratic manner, you can tell them to just F off and just put this this text. I want to believe the path he threw out for consideration in Andrew, Andy's office. Now, there's no way he gets elected, but I'm afraid we can't take that risk. Well, first of all, what's the path? And then there's no way we can't take the risk. What risk? What is Peter Strzok, the number two counterintelligence officer, talking about? This is the person in charge of the Clinton email investigation. And we're supposed to believe it wasn't a cover-up. Um, it was the biggest cover-up. And it was the most sloppy, sloppy cover-up. And it's not only a sloppy cover-up. There's, there's 1.2 million documents. We only have, what, three to four to 5,000. Something like that. So Devin Nunes is talking about, hey, we, we this is... The information that we're going to find out is nothing compared to what we already know. But I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration, Andrew, Andy's office. There's no way he gets elected. I'm afraid we can't take that risk. Strzok texted on August 15, 2016. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. So what's the insurance policy? Just ask Fusion GPS and CrowdStrike. Clinton purchased them through Perkins Coy. Cooey. Whatever. Okay, they never thought Trump would win, but they had an insurance policy that Strzok po talked about. The insurance policy was, well, you know what? Since the Democratic Party is so either beholden or the, the, the ties, the close ties are Democrats in Russia, not Trump in Russia. The Democrats have William D. Campbell, the FBI informant, stated that 
the Russian government specifically chose a lobbying firm because the Russian lobbying firm had so much influence over the Clinton Foundation, Hillary Clinton, and the Obama administration. They were bragging about their influence. They sold 20% of U.S. uranium capacity. Nobody has explained, not one Democrat or person on the left, how it's good for the country. How does this benefit the United States? How did it benefit the United States? In, in any way, how does it benefit to give anybody, especially Vladimir Putin, who is supposed to be this big enemy that we have, 20% of U.S. uranium capacity, mines that produce yellow cake uranium, which processed differently, can be used for a nuclear weapon. And guess what? Yellow cake uranium was shipped out of the country using the export licenses of trucking companies, American trucking companies. And yes, there was a bribery and racketeering effort to get these trucking companies. And we had one CEO, one, one American CEO already indicted. And there was a, um, a Russian um, energy official sent to prison. And who sent him to prison? Bob Mueller. What's Mueller doing now? Oh, he's just part of the Russia investigation. The same guy who presided over um, Vladimir Putin's energy official bribing American trucking companies. And he finally sends the guy to prison but doesn't inform President Obama doesn't say, oh, you know, by the way, there's this huge racketeering scandal where Russian energy officials are trying to get, and and they're very successful in getting American trucking companies to ship yellow cake uranium into Canada. And then from Canada, of course, it goes to Moscow and anywhere else they want. This happened under President Obama, who did not have ties to Russia. No, no, no. Even though Bill Clinton actually met with Vladimir Putin in 2010 outside in his home, in his home outside Moscow. This, this is all like Newsweek. You can look, anything I say you can look up. This is not like, and I'll put, I put the links below. You want to know that four of, of seven Co- of Comey's memos were classified? Here you have judiciary.senate.gov. Uh, this is the letter to the Justice Department by Bob Goodlad. Mr. Comey provided him four of the seven. Professor Richmond had four of the seven memos. It would appear that at least one of the memo, one memo the former FBI director gave Professor Richmond contained classified information. Then, of course, Comey says, well, I gave only one, and it was a summary of one. No, he didn't. He gave Richmond four. And then Professor Richmond actually worked for the FBI or had this, like, special status. So he lied. I mean, it's easy. Look, at this point right now, I don't know when Clinton is going to get indicted, but she will. It could be, uh, I think it's going to be within Trump's first term. It could be Trump's second term. Who knows? The statute of limitations for the email thing is 10 years, according to uh, Judge Napolitano. It's not just the email thing. Oh, I don't know. The biggest cybersecurity disaster in American history. The whole planet hacked into her server. But there's now ongoing FBI, Clinton Foundation probes, DOJ probes, IRS probes, um, so a federal election commission lawsuits, it's, you, it's not sustainable. Clinton, Hillary Clinton is yes, very powerful. Even now, very intelligent, uh, very influential, but she's a human being like you, like me, Hillary Clinton is a human being. It's not omnipotent and it doesn't matter if you're Richard Nixon or um, if you're President Park in South Korea before President Moon Jae-in, or if you're Nawaz Sharif in Pakistan, or if you're Nicolas Sarkozy in France. Um, I mean, we can go on. If you're Bill Clinton, eventually, uh, well, no, yeah, he got impeached, but um, Nixon is an example. He was more powerful than Hillary ever was. Um, That's, you can might say that's debatable but and he was taken down because of a cover-up and he was not even as sloppy not even one-tenth as sloppy as clinton is all the people that have taken all the people that have protected clinton all these years are now either selling books or they're andrew mccabe they're in deep criminal referrals they have to like contend with criminal referrals or they're peter strzok and lisa page they're uh, you know, romance is outed, and their texts, text messages are outed as well. Um, Bruce and Nellie Orr, Glenn Simpson, CrowdStrike. All of these people who worked for Clinton are now being outed as part of a conspiracy. Now, 
whether it's, I mean, I have a great deal of respect for uh, Professor Dershowitz, Alan Dershowitz, but Alan Dershowitz, when, when uh, they were, he was with Joseph de Geneva, a really, really brilliant guy, attorney, you know, um, almost worked on w Trump's team. And Joseph de Geneva was saying, you know, this was a, 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 a whole bunch of different actors working to undermine the president. And then this is a Fox News segment where Professor Dershowitz says, well, I don't believe, you know, you know, we have to get to the bottom of this, but I don't believe that, you know, that's, you know, he used the word conspiracy theory. They, with all due respect, the conspiracy theory is that all of these independent actors acted without having the same goal in mind. James Comey, John Brennan, James Clapper, Bruce and Nellie Orr, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, Andrew McCabe, um, Glenn Simpson, Christopher Steele, all of these people are not relying on any evidence. All of these people, and then you have the media they worked with. I haven't even gotten to the fact that he, so James Clapper lied. He was one of the conduits to the media. Same with Comey. Same with all of them. Um, it, when John Bren when uh, finally I'm getting it like what 15 minutes in, when when John Brennan met with, when John Brennan met with uh, Harry Reid, he met with Harry Reid. Okay, during the election, <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so transparent. Why you don't work for Reid? You work for Obama. Obama is your boss, not Harry Reid, who has like a patch on his eye half the time. Like, this is a per vulgarity alert. The guy looked like his profanity. The guy looked like a, like, a, like a retarded pirate half the time with the patch. Maybe he had surgery. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? Harry Reid is a typical Democrat. And they, and that's nothing against people who have eye patches. I mean, Moshe Dayan, that's like an eye patch is pretty badass, pretty awesome. I'd say, um, but Harry Reid and people like Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and John Brennan, I don't consider them heroic or, you know, worthy of any praise because they all presided over this monumental cover-up. So eye patches are awesome, but just not when you're talking about Harry Reid um, and John Brennan. John Brennan met with Harry Reid to discuss the, the, the Russian influence into the election. Do you know, want to know why? Do you want to know why Brennan? These people are just like, they, they like to fancy themselves as like this, I, I spy, like do the intelligence community. The intelligence community. Oh my God, is this the Cold War and you're, this is an espionage battle? No, no. This is all public relations and an extension of Clinton's campaign. John Brennan met with Harry Reid during the election. Let me just read you. Why am I harping on this? And I'll tell you in a second. And does this even get to the segment? Yes, it does. But hold on. Okay. Newly revealed te struck text messages raised questions about John Brennan, Harry Reid, Dennis uh, McDonough. So, the investigators argue this would contradict what the Obama administration has publicly, publicly maintained concerning their role in the investigation, which is seeking to determine if the Trump campaign colluded with the Kremlin during 2016. But the thing is, they already knew that he, they already knew that he didn't. They already knew that he there was no evidence. Yet even with no evidence, Brennan is informing the Democratic Party, which then, of course, President Obama knows. And even with no evidence, James Comey is is going ahead and introducing this, the Steele dossier, which is completely unverified, and which has already led to BuzzFeed suing the DNC for information to corroborate. He goes ahead and shows an incoming president a dossier not compiled by the NSA, $10 billion budget, compiled by an MI6, a British MI6 agent, Christopher Steele. 
So Clapper hit for dossier leak, dodge, and House GOP Russia Committee. Finally, get to the main point of the segment, 24 minutes in. All of these people then use the media. Brennan speaks to Harry Reid. Then it filters throughout the media. Oh, you know, and then you have Mother Jones reporters part of this. You have um, CNN a part of this. You have Jake Tapper a part of this. You have James Comey and James Clapper who are disseminating information through the media about a fake news dossier. The dossier, nothing has been corroborated. You try to get articles that are like, yo, this is, a lot of, lots of things have been corroborated. Really? Name one. You, there's only allegations. The country of Russia exists. Yes. Other than that, there's nothing that's been corroborated in the Steele dossier, any, any of the allegations. That's why, that's why BuzzFeed's suing the DNC. None of the major claims have been corroborated. The business issues, whatever, nothing's been corroborated. So here we go. Let's just go ahead and finally get to James Clapper. I didn't have any contact with media until after I left the government on the 20th of January. So you didn't leak anything about the dossier to any media? No, not. Really? Okay. A new congressional report says otherwise, suggesting the former director of uh, the National Intelligence, James Clapper, leaked information about the Russian dossier and lied about it to Congress. Here to weigh in, George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley. Uh, Jonathan, Clapper uh, has a little bit of a problem with, with truth because we know he's lied to Congress before. Is he doing it again? So Jonathan Turley is absolutely fantastic, but it's, it's important to remember this. They're lying to Congress because they had to utilize, they had to utilize the media. Um, they had to they had to utilize the media in order to get this myth going. This was Trump Russia was a psychological or a an emotional therapy session. The 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 reality. The, the minds of people, when you saw people crying at the Jacob Javits Center, and you saw these people just weeping, okay? And if you watch me, I was like, yeah, I told you. Um, if you watch my segments that, that night. Um, but these people were, were crying because their lives were shattered, their realities were shattered, and then they went from one shattered reality to the next. Oh, Trump, Russia. So they went from Hillary's going to win, Hillary's going to win, to, yeah, Trump really worked with Russia. So it's like Democrat, the Democratic Party is never going to get out of this, this stupor, this drunken stupor, this, um, this nightmare scenario, this nightmare where they constantly are in this alternate reality. They went from Hillary winning Texas to, oh, my God, he, Trump worked with Russia, both of which are ridiculous and absurd notions that Hillary would even get close in Arizona or Texas. And that Russia would need to interfere in the election. Nobody knows how WikiLeaks obtained the emails. It was a leak, not a hack. We know that from NSA legend um, Bill Binney, uh, CIA legend Ray McGovern, brilliant journalist Elizabeth Voss at Disobedient Media, Adam Carter, the forensicator. Then we have the issue of Disobedient Media and Elizabeth Voss, absolutely brilliant journalist. They, she, um, in Disobedient Media... Uh, you know, got the story going uh, with a breakthrough story regarding Joseph Mifsud. The the professor, not the professor from Gilligan's Island, although that's probably more credible than this guy. This guy's like, you know, went AWOL now. Nobody knows where he is. He's complete. He's like a missing person. But, oh, by the way, he had ties to British intelligence. Pictures with, with British, uh, you know, UK leaders, Boris Johnson, um, he's partying with them, drinking. So this is, this is not a Russian spy. And this was after he was outed as a Russian spy. He took those pictures as a quote-unquote Russian spy spoke to Papadopoulos. Anyway, anyway, it's all a bunch of nonsense. But let's get to James Clapper. These people, are, they suck at lying, too. How do they keep us safe? How on earth do these people keep us safe? Ever. Are we safe? That's the question that, I mean, a profound question to ask. I don't know. I hope we are. Um, with these clowns protecting us for eight years, probably not. The Obama administration presided over so many foreign policy failures. It was unbelievable. 
Now they're like, oh, Trump is going to mess with Obama's Iran deal. I don't, there's 23 ballistic missile tests they were allowed to conduct. <laughs> what kind of stupid, what kind of idiotic nuclear deal allows ballistic missile tests? We were getting on North Korea for their ballistic missile tests. We we're like, oh my God, they launched another missile. With Iran, it's like, oh, no problem. It's just part of the uh, agreement, the deal. It's a landmark deal. And now we have peace between North and South Korea, which is a earth-shattering, monumental, majestic, paradigm-changing. I mean, it's unbelievable. Happened under President Trump. That's why one of the reasons I'm voting for Trump. And the haters will be like, oh, dude, he had no influence. Yeah, okay, you didn't like his diplomacy or his version of diplomacy or foreign policy. Oh, my God, he's going to cause a nuclear war. With, he's calling, you know, uh, Kim Jong-un, all these names on Twitter. Now it's, oh, my God, he had no influence. Oh, my God, it wasn't him. Everything is oh my, it's OMG. Everything's OMG with Democrats. Oh, my God. And you know what? Where the Democrats are at right now where Republicans were when they were trying desperately to just hurt Obama any way possible, which paved the way for Obama to make bad decisions without media scrutiny because Republicans were just, you know, during the beginning of the Obama years, there was a lot of racism and there was a lot of um, just nonsense. You know, you lie and you're not born in the country and all these things. And so that's stupid. Don't... If you put if you place all your political capital on that type of thing, you're not going to win. And that's what Democrats are doing now. They stand for nothing. Now Republicans might still stand for the party itself, the establishment might just be just like maybe a conservative democratic party. It's actually Trump. It's actually Donald Trump that saved the the Republican party. It's not the other way around. The Republican party is not where it's at today because of what it stands for, what it, what it does. The Republican Party is at where is where it's at today because of Trump. It's because of Trump. There is uh, enthusiasm because of Trump. You don't get that from any other Republican. Um, but you also don't get it. I don't think you get from a Republican or Democrat. You get peace in, uh, in the Korean Peninsula. I think that is unique... Uniquely, Trump, I think that President Trump had a lot to do with that. I think China also, of course, had a lot to do with that. But, I, you know, Clinton goes, let's say Clinton became president. There's no way, there's no way there's peace. She was talking about ringing China with missile defense. You want to talk about, just really quickly... Okay. Clinton warned the U.S. would ring China with missile defense. Is that going to bring about peace in the Korean Peninsula? I don't think so. U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton said in a private speech to bankers three years ago, the United States had warned Beijing it would ring China with missile defense unless it did more to rein in North Korea's missile program. This is a profanity alert. This is a profanity alert. You know what the Chinese said to us? Almost certainly, which they were, had every right to. This is a profanity alert. They probably told us to fuck off. Clinton said in a private speech to bankers, gee, thanks. I wasn't invited, neither were you, most likely. A private speech to bankers. The United States had warned Beijing it would ring China with missile defense. Wow. What another failed, idiotic, stupid, inept foreign policy uh, blunder from the Obama-Clinton years. The United States had warned Beijing it would ring China with missile defense. Gee, wonder why there wasn't peace in the Korean Peninsula during President Obama's tenure. Gee, I wonder why. According to a purported Clinton campaign document attached to an email, Clinton said in a speech to Goldman Sachs that the message to China had been, you either control them or we're going to have to defend against them. But Trump never threatened China. Notice that difference a different approach. He never said we're going to ring China with missile defense. The stupidest people on the planet, on the left. There, there are some dummies on the right too, but you can't get more pathetic and ignorant than you want to ring China with missile defense to go ahead and rein in North Korea. 
the whole the, China utilized North Korea as a buffer against the United States. It's stupid. You're pretty much reinforcing China utilizing North Korea as as a buffer against us by doing that. Anyway, so when people say, "Oh, Trump had no no," yeah, Trump had a lot to do with what's going on now. But I'll put that below too. Clinton warned the U.S. would ring China with missile defense. It just you, you got to ask like. Does Clinton know anything about foreign policy? Anything? Anything? She voted for Iraq, pushed for the bombing of Libya, and wanted to ring China with missile defense. This is like, you know, this is like kind of like brazen mentality. Let's just be tough to be. And then she wanted a no-fly zone in Syria. ISIS doesn't have jets. What a genius. Oh, and what to to get into a confrontation like uh, like Top Gun with Russian jets? That that's good. Anyway, let's go ahead and um, this is Jonathan Turley. Well, that is indeed the question. You know, Clapper most certainly did lie to Congress. He was not indicted. In fact, the statute of limitations ran out not long before he took the job at CNN. Uh, there's a serious issue here. Uh, you know, Clapper has already admitted that he did speak with CNN. Uh, now, he is insisting that he didn't speak to any media until January 20th, but he indicated that he spoke to CNN in early January. Uh, the key is that that CNN story ran around January 10th. What's also interesting is that Comey, uh, the former FBI director, said that CNN was looking for a hook in order to run the story of the dossier. He said that to Trump. That hook ultimately became that briefing with Comey. All right, so you have the timeline not working in Clapper or Comey's favor. Then you have Tapper a part of this as well. And it, it's just unbelievable how CNN is literally like, if the Washington Post is a DNC newsletter, CNN is basically like, you know, DNC video, the DNC news station. It's you have CNN, the FBI, and the C and, and 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 the in the ODNI chief, but you also have the CIA informing Democrats, and they it's still it's now being uncovered. What a sloppy, ridiculous! When you look at it just in terms of the entire picture, what did they think was going to happen? Well, they've already succeeded, unfortunately. There are very intelligent people. I have a buddy, very, very intelligent. He believes that Russia influenced the election. He thinks the Steele dossier could mean something. There's got to be something there. So that's it. I guess when you look at it in terms of what they accomplished, they already accomplished what they wanted. So there you go. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere. Clapper lied, and all three of Obama's intelligence chiefs lied. And they all presided over fabricating the Trump-Russia myth as an insurance policy, the same insurance policy that Peter Strzok talked about. Give me your thoughts below. Share this segment everywhere.